Okay, good morning to our learning faculty. Good morning to the students. Uh, we have uh, gathered today once again to continue with our learnings on the subject jurisprudence, interpretation of statutes, and general laws. Our learned faculty, CS Kalyani ma'am, has enlightened us and shared her knowledge on different chapters of the subject. Now, that includes sources of law, that includes interpretation of statutes, law of thoughts, ma'am, has covered, right to information act has been covered, information technology act has been covered, law of crimes has been covered, and yesterday we did our chapter on administrative law. Today, uh, ma'am has told us uh, in the morning that uh, we shall be starting with the law of contract, uh, which would include the meaning, the intrigue cases, and the, and the nuances involved in the subject of law of contract. And before we start uh, our today's class, let me say that this subject is uh, one subject which is going to uh, help you throughout your career uh, as a company secretary because uh, the intricacies involved in the subject uh, is something which a company secretary has to know. Now, ma'am has also been doing quick revisions as also giving you questions uh, to practice at home. Hope you are putting in the much required efforts to enhance your own learning and making your learning curve go up and steep under the solemn object, uh, solemn initiative taken by the Institute of conducting online centralized classes for its students under enrolled under the uh, executive program as well as the professional program of the company secretaryship course. Now, for your revisions through recorded lectures, we have already demonstrated as to how you can access them on the e-learning portal of the ICSIS website. And that is all from my end and wishing you happy learning. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much, sir. A very good morning to one and all. So yes, as our custom, first we'll be discussing the answers for yesterday's three questions. And then we'll move to a new chapter. Again, a very, very, very interesting chapter. But yes, a big chapter which will require time to be covered. I'll be taking many examples so that it will be very, very easy for you to understand the concepts from the chapter. So first question for yesterday, which we took was about the Nemo Judex in Causa Sua. That is rule against bias we have written. So in this, what all we are expected to write. So first we are going to give introduction about the rule against bias, Nemo Judex in Causa Sua. Then we are going to write about the three types of bias. Now, this is very, very important. Many a times what happens that student makes a mistake that they write only the introduction. They don't mention the types of the bias, but it is mandatory to be written then and only then we are going to score good marks. So three kinds of three types of bias. First is your pecuniary. Second is your personal. And third is your subject matter bias. So we are going to describe these types in a very short manner. So this was the first question where we wrote about one of the rules of natural justice. That is your rule against bias. Then we took the second question in which we wrote about what? About the statutory corporations and their features. So now a public corporation, statutory corporation, we are going to describe what it means. Then we are going to give a few examples of these kinds of corporations. And then we are going to write about the features. Now, what all to be included in the features, we are going to write that it is uh, it is formed by a special statute or the capital is provided by the government. It is having a financial autonomy. It has, is, uh, it has its own staff as well as the motive is the service motive. How it is managed, how board of directors are appointed, that we are going to mention and the public accountability. That point we are going to specifically mention. Now, each and every point you are going to describe in two, three, two, three lines. I am just giving you the pointers which you are going to keep in mind for writing the answer. So this was our second question pertaining to public corporation, statutory corporation. Third question we took. That was a very interesting question. I hope you have written this question. I had given this. That I want my kids to write and I want to see whether they can write it in a proper manner. We took a question in which we said that how your ratio decidendi differs from obiter dicta. So we are expected to write about ratio decidendi. We are expected to write about obiter dicta. 
and if there are any differences what are the differences that is to be specifically mentioned so your threshold residency is reasons for the decision obeta dicta is something said by the way so we are going to describe what threshold residency is we are going to describe what obeta dicta is and we are going to mention that threshold residency has the binding effect as a precedent and not the obiter dicta so this is the expected answer for this question or this question can be asked in various manners as i have already told you that if you know the concept it you can write it even if it is asked in any manner for example now this specific question is asked in which manner what are the different types of framing of question for this specific whatever we have discussed distinguish between ratio decedent and obiter dicta how ratio decedent differs from obiter dicta distinguish between ratio decedent and obiter dicta and what are the rules governing binding force of judicial precedents each and every question is having the same answer only the framing of question is different so we should not get confused with the question if you understand the question properly you can write the answer for that purpose i am repeating daily that you are required to read the question in a very calm manner in a very proper manner till end of the question we are not going to assume that we know just by start of the question okay we know what is ratio decedent are but what are they asking try to first understand that whether they are asking you distinction between whether they are asking you similarities whether they are specifically focusing on any point now like in this question they are focusing on governing binding force of judicial precedent so we should be thorough with whatever they have asked and then and only then we are going to write so i hope you have written all three questions and you enjoyed writing these questions if yes well and good if no then then also you are required to write you don't have any option because you'll say ma'am why no option because i'm not going to give you any option in writing specifically because that is much much required okay so now let us start let us start with a new 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 chapter if you have any question in all three questions whatever we have discussed write it in the chat box we'll take it afterwards once we start taking all the questions we'll definitely take your questions whatever you have pertaining to yesterday's questions okay so now i'll just share my screen so that you can see the module study material yes okay so let with contract law so one of the very 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 important chapters from our practical perspective also because we are required to enter into various contracts on a daily basis we are required to draft contracts for our clients we are required to review the contracts whatever are drafted if our client is receiving any contract we are required to review it and as per the contract act as per various points which we are going to discuss going through this chapter we are required to take care of all it so now what all we are going to study in this chapter so key concepts agreement contract void agreement quantum merit contingent quasi bailment pledge e contract now you can see to understand they have given in detail what all we are going to study so starting from general principles relating to formation enforceability we are going to study various types of contract what do you mean by offer what do you mean by acceptance what is consideration who is capable to enter into a contract what do you mean by free consent if you want to terminate how you can terminate it what are the remedies available for breach of contract now these are special kinds of contract where we have indemnity guarantee bailment pledge agency and types of agents e contracts which nowadays we are using a lot and all about joint venture agreement so this is the synopsis which we are going to study so let us start with a very 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 interesting chapter my favorite chapter which i am saying now you will say ma'am for each and every chapter you say this is your favorite but this is special favorite because i am teaching contracts as a subject 
whole subject of 100 marks so you can just imagine how much i can talk on this subject how much i can talk on this act because i take almost 3 to 3.5 months daily lectures just to complete section 1 to 75 of contracts act so i have many 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 examples for this but yes i'll restrict myself as per the time frame given so now in this regulatory framework is your indian contract act 1872 now what do you mean by the term contract what is the meaning of the term contract what is nature of contract so the law relating to contract it is governed by indian contract act 1872 now you can imagine that the act which was passed in the year 1872 which is before our freedom in the british era we are still following that enactment so the value of that act you can just understand from it so act came into force on 1st september 1872 and what the preamble of the act says the preamble of the act says that it is an act to define and to amend certain parts of the law relating to contract extends to whole of india except j and k act is by no means exhaustive on the law of contract which means that we have various things for discussion it does not deal with all branches of law of contract so partnership sale of goods negotiable instrument insurance they are dealt with separate act so we are having separate enactments for partnership sale of goods negotiable instrument insurance etc so for this generally we term it as a special form of contract special kind of contract so 1 to 75 it is basics about the contracts and further sections we are having few sections which now have been extracted and a new act has been prepared but no doubt for each and every kind of contract it can be a special contract but the basics of contract are applicable to each and every kind of contract now mostly this deals with general principles and rules governing contracts so divided into two parts the first part is section 1 to 75 which i am referring again and again it talks about general principles of law of contract and applies to all kinds of contracts now this is very important applies to all contracts irrespective of their nature and the second part is 124 to 238 where we have special kinds of contracts like indemnity guarantee bailment pledge and and agency okay so now we understand that what contract means so as per indian contract act contract in section 2 clause h is defined as agreement enforceable by law so two components one is agreement plus when it becomes enforceable by law it is termed as a contract so a plus e equals to c now these definitions they indicate that there are two distinct parts first agreement should be there and second it must be enforceable by law so to be enforceable agreement must be coupled with an obligation so now what is obligation we are going to study so contract is a combination of two elements one is your agreement one is your obligation they are given an example just go through this example just go through this example very very easy example <clears throat> very easy example understood properly okay now moving ahead agreement what is agreement so agreement it gives birth to a contract so agreement is the base from which a contract is introduced so as per section 2 clause e of indian contract act it says that every promise or every set of promises which is forming consideration for each other 
is an agreement so now from this definition what we understand that the agreement is based on a promise now comes the question what is promise so according to section 2 clause b when person to whom proposal is made signifies his assent thereto the proposal is said to be accepted once the proposal is accepted it becomes a promise so agreement it comes into existence when one party makes a proposal or offer to the other party and the other party signifies his assent in nutshell agreement is some total of offer and acceptance so now comes a question that okay ma'am we said that there should be a proposal that proposal should be accepted then there will be a promise that will be for consideration and then it becomes a agreement so in nutshell agreement is offer and acceptance the party is going to signify their consent so in this what we are trying to say we are trying to say that whenever a proposal is made what is proposal proposal is a offer offer is made to someone and that person is accepting your offer that is giving assent to your proposal or offer then we say that your proposal got accepted now when the proposal is accepted it becomes a promise so ultimately once you are accepting it it means you are going to perform it now agreement comes into existence when party is making a proposal offer to the other party other party is signifying his assent so agreement is the total of offer plus acceptance so offer plus acceptance is your agreement and whenever we are using the word agreement agreement is the what we said agreement specifically is the basic thing from which a contract is introduced so agreement gives a birth to a contract so whenever there is a agreement and it is enforceable by law we are going to term it as a contract okay going forward now analysis of definition agreement there are plurality of persons and there should be consensus ad idem now what is this plurality of persons can i enter into a agreement with myself no why because i need one more person then and only then i can enter into a contract so there is plurality of person minimum two or more than two persons are required to make an agreement because one person cannot enter into an agreement with himself second consensus ad idem what is consensus ad idem it is meeting of minds it is called as consensus ad idem so both the parties to agreement must agree both about the subject matter of the agreement in the same sense at the same time if i am trying to discuss with you something in my mind i am having jigl in your mind you are having company law are we on the same page no so whenever we agree on the same subject matter in the same sense at the same time then and only then we are going to say that there is consensus ad idem okay just go through this basic if you have any question write it in the query box just go through it if you have any question write it in the query box clear no questions whatever questions you are having you have written it pakka lock karna hai yes just give me a minute because in this i am unable to write 
so i'll just change the application just a minute not more than that ma'am probably whiteboard uh, function would help yes whiteboard no uh, i'm sharing the note every day but i'm unable to see this chapter in the note so i'll upload it in the note again so i can write there sure. so i'm using note every day nowadays that is helpful which i am thinking right. so i'll just do that in a few seconds not more than that in the meantime if anyone is having any questions please do write so that we can take it at the end one person why not eligible how come one person can be entering into a contract okay so it is opening there in the meantime we'll continue with the next part now what do you mean by obligation so obligation is your duty generally we use this word many a times where we say obligation it is my obligation to be present for the session it is my obligation to listen to my parents right so obligation it is a legal duty to do or abstain from doing so either to do it or not doing it what one has promised to do or abstain from doing so this is obligation which arises why because you are entering into a contract so there is a bargain between the parties to the agreement who are called as promisor and promisee so we are having two parties one is your promisor one is your promisee now as the name suggests the person who promises is the promisor the person to whom promise is made will be termed as a promisee so section 2 clause b it says that when person to whom proposal is made signifies assent and it is accepted so proposal when accepted becomes a promise which we just studied so contract it is an exchange of promises by two or more persons which is resulting into an obligation so as we are exchanging our promises it is now getting converted into obligation either to do something or abstain from doing something where obligation is recognized and enforced by law take an example that i am giving offer to nitin sir for 100 kg sugar for xyz amount now i have given this offer nitin sir is accepting my offer he is giving an assent that okay i am ready to buy this 100 kg sugar pack now it is my obligation to deliver the product it is nitin sir's obligation to pay for the product now i am giving you very basic example we'll be adding many things in the example so once we go ahead and we add the provisions of the contract act the examples will be having a very wider perspective now only a basic that how obligation is created okay so this is specifically when i am giving an offer sir is accepting the offer giving assent to that offer now it is my obligation to deliver the product it is sir's obligation to pay for the product now whenever it is a contract which is made parties have made a binding contract they have created rights obligations so contractual rights obligations they are correlative example they have given cars example i gave you sugars example just go through it a very 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 easy example 
day to day example which you can say so a agrees with b to sell his car for 10000 what are the rights obligations a is under obligation to deliver the car to b b has corresponding right to receive the car b is under obligation to pay a has co relative right to receive rupees so these are rights and obligations now there are few agreements which are not termed as contracts so agreements in which idea of bargain is absent there is no bargain and there is no intention to create legal relation now this is very very important because this is one of the essentials of valid contract that there should be an intention to create legal relation they are not contract so what are these these are agreements relating to social matters and domestic arrangements between husband and wife for example if i promise you if i promise you that i'll be taking you for a movie after your exams okay i'm promising you that i'll take you for a movie after your exams now if i don't take you for a movie will you go against me in the court of law by saying that kalyani ma'am had promised us that she is going to take us for a movie but she didn't no why because this is a social matter we have not entered into a proper valid contract in which in writing i am giving you i am giving you offer you are accepting it there is some consideration for that so it is not the case so in social matters this is not going to happen in domestic arrangements between husband and wife example my husband promises me that he is going to gift me a ring on 31st december as it is a new year he said i'll gift your diamond ring he didn't whether i can see you him that word promised me you are going to give me a ring you didn't so these are domestic arrangements between husband and wife so there is no intention to create a legal relation so these are not at all the contract or what happens many a times our parents promise us that if you score these many marks if you clear this exam will gift you something and if they don't gift you then can we go and ask through court of law that you had promised me you are going to gift me a iphone if i clear my cs executive exams but now you are not giving me iphone it is not going to happen so such agreements are not enforceable why because because specifically there is no intention to create a legal relationship so they are explaining here agreements relating to social matters and domestic arrangements between husband and wife just read it nothing different you are going to get whatever examples we have discussed that is only the concept just go through it so what we understood agreements relating to social matters two persons they make an agreement that to go together for a cinema for a walk whether there is any legal obligation answer is no so if i promise to take you for a dinner break that promise i am not liable for any legal penalties domestic arrangement this is one of the landmark cases balfour versus balfour in which there was just we cannot say it was a agreement or a contract the husband promised in writing to pay housekeeping allowance to his wife who was living in england now she was unfaithful to her husband and when he came to know about it he stopped the allowance so whether he was entitled to do so answer is yes now this was a domestic arrangement with no intention to create any legally binding relation so there was no contract and specifically she cannot claim that you had promised me but you are not paying so what are the consequences which we understand from this discussion that to constitute a contract to constitute a contract parties must intend to create legal relation so legal relationship is mandatory law of contract is the law of those agreements which create obligations 
and obligations which have their source in agreement so obligations are created which are introduced from your agreement itself and agreement is the genus of which contract is the species therefore all contracts are agreements but all agreements are not contracts a very 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 important statement jitne star marne mark ke rakho why because this statement is asked as a comment comment on this statement what do you think that whether all contracts are agreements all agreements are contracts so what we are going to keep in mind all contracts are agreements but all agreements are not contract now why because if we are observing it agreement is a very very big scope wala funda whereas your contract is just a part of it so whether every contract is agreement yes every contract is agreement but every agreement is contract answer is no why because there can be agreement where we are not following all the essentials of contract but it is an agreement it is an agreement but it is not a contract so now there was a agreement which i have agreed that i'll take you for a movie whether this was a contract no why because i don't have any intention of creating a legal relationship with you so agreement is a wider concept contract is a smaller concept so what we say all contracts are agreements but all agreements are not contracts why because contract is a legally binding agreement what i said contract is a legally binding agreement so we are having various agreements where they are not legally binding so this is about a statement which is asked many 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 a times in the exam that what do you think about this statement whether this is right whether this is wrong or in objective kind of questions we can get we can get a question where they are asking that all contracts are dash but all dash are not contracts so it can be asked in various manners if concept is clear you can answer any question whatever question is kept before you now what do you mean by intention to create legal relation so intention to create legal relation one of the essential elements of your valid contract which we say so there must be some intention among the parties that agreement should be attached by legal consequences and it is going to create legal obligations so if you are not having any intention then there is no contract so agreement of social domestic nature they do not have any legal relationship why because their specific motive is different so they are not contract so proposal offer which is made with a view to obtain assent of the other party and other party expresses their willingness to act or abstinence proposed then we say that the offer is accepted and your contract is made so both offer acceptance both should be done with intention of creating some legal relationship so the court is going to see whether you had intention to create any legal relationship and then and only then they are going to decide whatever cases are kept before them now they have given one example two persons agree to assist each other by rendering advice in pursuit of virtue science or art cannot be regarded as a contract why because in commercial business agreements presumption is usually that party intends to create legal relation but presumption is not acceptable which means that it must be shown that the parties did not intend to be legally bound so now legal relation that intention is very very important essential element of a valid contract which we say now whenever i am saying that i will take you for a movie it is not creating any legal relation hence it is not a contract now the important types of contract first is your contingent contract now what is contingent contract section 31 of the indian contract act it talks about your contingent contract so in this contract it is a contract to do or not to do something if some event collateral to such contract does or does not happen they have given one example 
that a contracts to sell b 10 bales of cotton for rupees 20000 if now this if is very important if the ship by which they are coming returns safely so it is dependent on happening of some event so whenever we are saying that it is dependent on some happening of event it is termed as a contingent contract so contract of insurance contract of indemnity guarantee these are examples of your contingent contract so this is again example of contingent what are the rules regarding contingent section 32 to 36 it gives us various rules that it depends upon happening of a future uncertain event cannot be enforced if the event is uncertain can you enforce it by law answer is no unless and until event has happened so event if it becomes impossible then your contract becomes void so a makes a contract to buy b's house if a survives c so this contract cannot be enforced by law unless and until c dies in a's lifetime so how you are going to determine this it is impossible event and if you are going to wait up to the event then if the event is not happening then contract becomes void a contracts to pay b a sum of money when b marries c C dies without married to B. Now contract becomes void. So whether such a transaction in which the conditions are as such where it is either impossible or it cannot happen or it is dependent on such a condition that we never know whether it is possible or not. So first rule what they are saying that contracts contingent upon happening of a future uncertain event cannot be enforced by law. Then comes contracts contingent upon non-happening of uncertain future event can be enforced when happening of event becomes impossible and not before. So once it becomes impossible, then and only then it is enforceable. Before that, it is not at all enforceable. Okay, so this is the second rule which you can say which is given in section 33. They have given one example, a contracts to pay B. Read that example. If certain ship does not return, so what is our contract? That I'll pay you some money if the ship does not return. Now, whenever the ship sinks, then and only then the uh, contract can be enforced when the ship sinks. Then comes if a contract is contingent upon how a person will act. How a person will act at an unspecified time, then the event shall be considered to become impossible. When such person does anything which renders it impossible, that he should so act within definite time or otherwise than under future contingencies. So now in this, what we are trying to say, the example which we just studied here, where what we said that I'll pay you money if you marry C. But now in this case, I'm going to add something that what I am saying, I'll pay you certain sum of money if you marry C. But what happened? You married D. So marriage of U and C is now impossible, right? What I said, I'm going to pay you certain amount of money if you marry C. But you married D. Now, whether your marriage C is possible, no. Now it has become impossible. So you can just keep in mind this specific example for section 34. Then comes contracts contingent on happening of a fixed time within a fixed time it becomes void if at the expiration of that time event has not happened or before the time fixed such event becomes impossible okay now if i promise you that i'll pay you rupees one lakh if certain ship returns within a year so contract may be enforced if the ship returns within a year and becomes void if ship does not return within the year so there is a fixed time which we are talking about that if it returns within a year i'll pay you if it does not return within a year i'm not going to pay you so this is your section 
which section 35 then comes your section 35 next part that is contracts contingent upon non happening of event within a fixed time so correct opposite one is if it is coming within fixed time if it is not coming in fixed time that if correct opposite i am telling you that if the ship does not return within a year i'll pay you so if it comes before one year whether i am liable to pay you my contract is that if ship does not return within a year does not return within a year then i'll pay you but if it is returning within a year i'm not going to pay you correct opposite to the earlier section so contract may be enforced if ship does not return within a year and last is your contracts which are again contingent on impossible event so con contingent agreement to do not to do anything if an impossible event happens are void whether impossibility is known or not known to the parties to the agreement at the time when it is made now take an example that i agree to pay you rupees 1 lakh if you marry mr x's daughter who is y but y was dead at the time of the agreement whether agreement is a valid agreement no it is a void agreement so this is agreement to do or not to do anything if impossible event happens or void whether impossibility is known or not known whether you had knowledge about this impossibility or even you didn't had any knowledge about the impossibility then and also then what we are going to term it we are going to term it as a void agreement just go through all these a to f circumstances i have given you example for each and everything just mention those examples in your study material besides that point so whenever you'll study with the example you'll call everything now even if you think that ma'am you have understood why to write still write it down in a very short manner next to the point in your study material so that whenever you'll do your self study it will be very 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 useful to have example for each and every point just go through it a to f if you have any question write it in the query box done shall we move ahead okay now the next part is various laws relating to other important types of contracts so what are the special types of contracts indemnity guarantee bailment pledge joint ventures which we are going to discuss at the end of the chapter so it is also necessary to understand these concepts why because basic understanding is always beneficial so these are covered later in the study material now comes the main section basic section of your indian contract act that is your section 10 which talks about essential elements of a valid contract so section 10 of indian contract act it provides that all agreements are contracts if they are made by free consent of parties competent to contract for a lawful consideration with a lawful object and not hereby expressly declared to be void so how many points we are covering in this it should be having free consent of parties competent to contract lawful consideration lawful object and not expressly declared to be void okay so now this is specifically specifically are the essential elements essential elements of valid contract are what is the first element there should be consensus ad idem now what is consensus ad idem we have studied so offer proposal by one party acceptance by another party resulting in an agreement offer proposal is given by one party which is accepted by other party hence we are entering into an agreement so there is consensus ad idem then going forward intention to create legal relation 
और इंटेंट टू हैव लीगल कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस देर शुड बी इंटेंशन दैट वी आर एंटरिंग इन टू अ लीगल रिलेशन एंड वी आर हैविंग इंटेंशन टू हैव लीगल कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज इफ आई डोंट फॉलो आई एम रेडी फॉर द कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज इज वॉट इज मैंडेटरी अग्रीमेंट to be supported by a lawful consideration so there should be a lawful consideration so we are having further sections where we are going to study what do you mean by consideration when the consideration is legal when we can say that even if there is no consideration there is a contract parties to the contract they are legally capable of contracting so if you are legally not capable then whether it is a valid contract answer is no genuine consent is required object consideration is legal not opposed to public policy tomorrow if i am entering into a contract for some thing which is illegal whether that will be a valid contract answer is no terms should be certain agreement is capable of being performed that is not impossible of being performed so to form a valid contract there should be agreement genuine consent lawful consideration lawful object and between the competent parties so these are the essential elements essential elements of a valid contract just go through these points if you have any question write it in the chat box from the same thing from where you are writing that how to submit query from there only you can write your questions or whatever questions i ask answers to those questions are whenever i am teaching you if you have any question if you have any question you can write it in the query box we'll be taking all questions together isse pehle din jaisa kyu kar rahe ho we have completed how many classes if i am not wrong 10 11 12 today's 13th class chalo If you have any query, do write it in the query box. Why? Because you should not forget it. For that purpose, we are asking you to write nothing else. Okay. Now going forward, can an agreement on ambiguous terms be valid? No. Why? Because we said that there should be valid terms. It should be certain. A and B entered into a contract in which A will send goods to B free of cost. B is not required to pay anything. Is the contract valid? No. Why? Because it should have consideration unless it falls into a exempted category. We are having two exemptions, but if it is falling in exempted category, then it is allowed. Otherwise, it is not a valid contract because consideration is a essential element in a contract. Now comes the kinds of offer communication acceptance revocation of offer and acceptance so offer or proposal and acceptance now in this one of the basic requirement in formation of contract is that we should give offer to the other party and the other party should accept your offer so whenever one party is making a proposal to another party so the person who is giving a proposal or giving an offer is termed as a offerer to whom it is given is termed as offeree so offerer and offeree are the two parties and the offer must be accepted in, in entirety without any qualification there is meeting of minds of the parties and contract comes into being assuming all other elements are also present take an example that i am giving an offer of 100 kg sugar for 5000 rupees to nitin sir okay 
Now, if Nitin sir is accepting my offer of hundred kgs, but for four thousand five hundred, whether I can say that my proposal is accepted? No. Why no? Because it is not accepted in entirety. What we are saying that whatever is offered, that is to be accepted in entirety without any qualification. Then and only then. we can say that your offer or proposal is accepted now what is an offer or proposal ye kya ho gaya okay what is an offer or proposal so proposal is also termed as offer ek hi bachche ke do naam hai okay now proposal is synonymous with english word offer offer is proposal by one person where he expresses his willingness to enter into a contractual obligation offer is a proposal by whom by me i am showing my willingness to enter into a contractual obligation in return for a promise act or forbearance so i am willing to enter into a agreement contract with nitin sir for supplying 100 kg of sugar proposer or offerer i am the offerer i am the proposer Sir, person to whom proposal is made is called the offeree. Nitin sir is offeree. So proposal, as given in section two, clause A, when one person signifies to another his willingness to do or to abstain from doing anything with a view to obtaining assent of that other to such act or abstinence, he is said to make a proposal. So what is offer? Or or proposal that is given now we are having various kinds of offers okay now what are the kinds of offers we are having total seven kinds of offers so now in this specifically what are the kinds of offers which we are going to study so the first is particular offer or a specific offer so now i am addressing my proposal only to nitin sir whether i am saying that i want to sell 100 kg of sugar who is willing to buy no this is a particular offer a specific offer which is addressed only to nitin sir so it can be accepted only by nitin sir or any person who is authorized by nitin sir whether that can be accepted by you answer is no why because i am not giving you an offer if i am not giving you an offer how you are going to accept it so particular specific offer is offer which is made and addressed to a certain person only example read that example so i offers to sell his car to be on a consideration this is type of a particular offer because this offer is given only to be whether c can accept whether d can accept whether z can accept no so this is a particular specific offer now we have general offer so of now for public at large it may be accepted by anyone whether you can say now that oh we had given offer to everyone but we are not going to provide you whatever you are asking for you cannot accept this offer no why because you are already giving it to public so now anyone can accept that specific offer so this is a general offer made to public at large tickets are example of general offer so tickets purchased for entrance into places like amusement parks or for railways bus companies cloak room tickets these are various general offers which are given now no doubt the person who purchases it many a times it is said that you cannot transfer it it is only and only for you you have purchased it so what we are going to keep in mind we are going to keep in mind that whenever offer is made to a general public what we can say that anyone can specifically accept that offer so this is your general offer which can be made so this is a general or a public offer which is made to world at a large now 
your offer many a times there are advertisements which are given for uh, public at large again it is example of a general offer now we are having cross offers now two parties gives offer to each other parties to each other neither side knowing the others offer when they make their own so they do not constitute acceptance of each other as such no contract is formed how come because they are identical offers made by two persons or parties to each other i am saying that i want to sell 100 kg of sugar at rupees 10000 to nitin sir nitin sir is saying can you sell me can you uh, i am willing same identical offers which are given by both the parties now there is one example that a rights to be offering to sell his bike for 15000 b simultaneously rights to a offering to buy his bike for the same price now the two males cross each other if no for the or communication take place no contract at link to sell it at the same price cross a person offers to another to sub to interact with nitin sir that i'll be selling you sugar for next 3 months at rupees 25 per kg whenever you want i'll be selling it for 25 per kg which will be delivered on next day whenever you order on the next day i'll deliver that amount of sugar that quantity of sugar for a predetermined price that is 25 rupees per kg whether this is a standing offer yes so standing offer or tender is of nature of continuing offer so acceptance merely amounts to intimation that the offer will be considered to remain open during the period specified in our case it is 3 months and it will be accepted from time to time by placing order for specified quantities whatever quantity sir is going to order i'll be providing that quantity so offer is in effect till that period whatever period has been decided now if tomorrow i want to withdraw my offer of 25 rupees am i allowed to do so yes if nitin sir thinks that okay now i don't want to buy sugar from kalyani i'll buy it from someone other some other person who is offering me for 23 rupees per kg so so can he say that okay whatever offer was given now i'm not going to continue with this offer answer is yes so they have given an example p tendered to supply goods to l up to certain amount certain period l is order breach of contract so each order made was separate contract and p was bound to fulfill orders but there was no obligation to make any order to all so this is possible limited versus l c c case one example just go through this example a very very easy example
now comes the counter offer so i have given you one example where i said that i am willing to sell 100 kg of sugar for 5000 which i have offered to nitin sir nitin sir is saying that i am ready to buy 100 kg but not for 5000 for 4500 so nitin sir is giving me a counter offer so whenever i am offering something and a counter offer is made that will be a counter offer so offer made against an offer already made so contracts can be made only after acceptance of counter offer if i accept the counter offer that okay i am ready to sell it for 4500 then and only then we can say that okay we are entering into a contract otherwise if i deny whether contract is done no a offers to sell mobile phone 10000 counter offer 9500 this is counter offer now comes contracts by post so contracts by post they are having same rules as others but because of their importance they are given that offer by post may be accepted by post unless the offerer indicates anything to the contrary so whenever we are trying to what we are doing we are trying to specifically accept it we are required to send it with the same mode so offer by post may be accepted by post if i am writing that i want it on email and not by post then and only then it can be accepted in different mode okay now comes offer is made only when it actually reaches the offeree and not before so when the letter containing offer is delivered to the offeree take an example on 1st of january i am sending an offer by post to nitin sir which reaches nitin sir on Fourth of January. So, when far as the offerer is concerned, as soon as Nitin, which reaches to me on tenth of January. Now, please listen this carefully because we are going to get confused in this for sure. So, now for me, I am the proposer, offerer, and Nitin sir is the offeree. So, for me, my proposal has reached on fourth of January. For Nitin sir, he has accepted it on sixth of January, but I am yet to receive the acceptance. So for me, when the accept the offerer is concerned it binds the offerer but not the acceptor who is the offerer i am the offerer who is acceptor nitin sir is the acceptor so it is binding on me on 6th of january but not binding on nitin sir so acceptance binds the acceptor only when the acceptance reaches the offerer so it reached on 10th of january so on 10th of january it is now binding on nitin sir it is binding for kalyan shirode on 6th of january itself but for nitin sir it will be binding from 10th of january so result is that acceptor can revoke his acceptance before it reaches the offerer so whether nitin sir can withdraw his offer acceptance not offer withdraw his acceptance so yes before 10th of january he can withdraw his acceptance so offer may be revoked before letter containing acceptance is posted if i want to revoke my uh, offer i can revoke it before 6th of january because on 6th of january he has accepted so i can revoke it before 6th of january so acceptance can be revoked uh, revoked before it reaches the offerer so this is 
a quite you can say confusing concept but if you understand it's very easy i'm trying my level best to give it through a example in a very very short manner i'm not taking in detail example why because otherwise i'll require much more time and it is not that much given in your syllabus it is just basic which is given which we are required to understand so this is contract by post now comes contract by telephone so contracts over telephone they are same as if two people are in front of each other so oral offer is made oral acceptance is expected now acceptance must be audible heard understood by the offerer now during the uh, conversation if telephone lines go dead range hi nahi hai awaaz nahi aa raha hai so offerer does not hear the offeree's word of acceptance there is no contract at the moment if whole conversation is repeated offerer hears and understands the acceptance then only we can say that your contract is complete this is kanaiya lal case which is contract over telephone now comes rules governing the offer so valid offer they have few rules that the offer must be clear definite complete final it must not be vague that if i say that i'll be offering 100 kgs of sugar to nitin sir at 5000 or 5500 or 6000 whether this is a clear offer no they have given example promise to pay increased price for a horse if it proves lucky to promiser is too vague not binding who is going to define whether it is lucky or not how you are going to define it so this is a very vague offer as it is vague it is not binding offer must be communicated to the offeree it becomes effective only when it is communicated to the offeree so as to give him an opportunity to accept the same or reject the same so communication of offer is mandatory now the communication may be made by express words oral or written or it may be implied by conduct so a offers his car to be for 10000 this is a express offer a bus plying on a definite route goes along the street this is implied offer on the part of the owners of the bus to carry passengers at the scheduled fares for various stages so express is directly done implied is indirectly done so communication of the offer it may be general or specific if you are making an offer to a specific person then it is a specific offer it can be accepted only by that specific person but if you are addressing it to uncertain persons or to public then we are going to say that it is a general offer and it can be accepted by any member of general public by fulfilling the conditions ever are given in the offer okay these two case laws you are going to read for your homework read this example read the example that now comes offer and invitation to offer what is offer what is invitation to offer so invitation to offer it is a communication to invite certain persons or public for making offer so there are few examples which they have given first is invitation to treat or invitation to make an offer so we have seen in various movies that there is auction there is bid so auctioners request for bids which are offered by the bidders display of goods in a shop window with prices marked upon them 
or display of priced goods in a self service store or a shopkeepers catalog these are invitation to offer so they are inviting you they are inviting you that is invitation to offer okay now comes a statement of intention now what is a statement of intention so statement of intention specifically gives us that whenever any announcement is made that there is auction in coming days so person who attended the advertised place of auction could not sue for breach of contract if the auction was cancelled because they are just giving their intention that will be having such a auction you cannot claim that if it is not happening so this is mere statement of intention then comes mere communication of information in the course of negotiation so statement of price at which one is prepared to consider negotiating the sale of piece of land is a mere communication of information in the course of negotiation whenever you are negotiating it is just the information which is provided so offer that has been communicated properly continues at such until it lapses or until it is revoked by the offerer or rejected or accepted by the offeree so till what time it will be valid till what time it is valid is understood from this statement that you need to communicate it properly and it is valid until it lapses it ends or it is revoked by the offerer the party who gave the offer is only revoking the offer or rejected or accepted by the offeree till that time your offer is a valid offer okay now comes the lapse of offer now when your offer lapses so section 6 it deals with lapse of offer so there are various circumstances in which your offer gets lapsed first is if it is not accepted within the specified time if any or reasonable time if none is specified either accepted or rejected so offer is valid only for 7 days so specified time if any if it is not accepted in that time we are going to say that the offer is lapsed or reasonable time if it is not specified then we see generally that it is to be in a reasonable time frame okay reasonable time frame then comes the next lapse of offer section 6 says that it is accepted in the mode prescribed or if no mode is prescribed in some usual reasonable manner by sending a letter by mail when early reply was requested so if i have mentioned that i want you to accept it on email so you need to accept it by email if i am not mentioning any prescribed mode then it, a usual reasonable mode is to be followed if you are not following it the offer is lapsed then comes the offeree rejects it by distinct refusal to accept it nothing is rejected my offer so that is a direct rejection either offerer or the offeree dies before acceptance so before accepting the party died acceptor fails to fulfill a condition which is precedent to an acceptance so there was some condition which was to be fulfilled which the acceptor has not fulfilled for example we can say that i had proposed to let out my house to you for a monthly rent of rupees 10000 subject to the condition that you should deposit me deposit with me some 50000 rupees as security before a certain date now you accepted the proposal but you didn't provide me the security money so acceptance has no validity or stands revoked why because it was the pre condition to give me the security deposit so if the offerer has imposed any condition and the acceptor's failure to satisfy the same it shall lead to lapse of the offer then comes the offeree makes a counter offer so it amounts to rejection of the offer offer by the offeree may be accepted or rejected by the offerer so these are various conditions in which your offer gets lapsed just go through it
done perfectly understood lapse of offer now revocation of offer by the offerer offerer is the person who is giving the offer so offer may be revoked by the offerer at any time before acceptance in our case it was received on 4th of january and it was accepted on 6th of january so i have time up to 6th of january i could have revoked my offer so revocation it must be communicated to the offeree it is my responsibility to communicate to the offeree that i am revoking my offer so it does not take effect until it is actually communicated to the offeree before actual communication offeree may accept the offer create a binding contract before i convey that i am revoking my offer if it is accepted now i don't have any scope because it is already accepted and now it has become a binding contract so revocation must reach the offeree before he sends the acceptance so offer to keep open for a specified time is not binding unless it is supported by consideration so this is revocation of offer by offerer what are the modes of revocation so it can be by communication of notice of revocation by the proposer or by lapse of time if we have prescribed if not prescribed reasonable time failure of acceptor to fulfill condition which is precedent to acceptance and by death or insanity of the proposer if fact of death insanity comes to the knowledge of the acceptor before acceptance now point 1 is revocation 2 to 3 are revocation by omission there is omission so this is the omission part okay whether everything is clear to you whatever we are discussing if not write it in the query box write it in the query box yes done okay it's 1117 we'll break for 5 minutes 5 minutes break and immediately will come back go fast and come fast if you have any questions write it in the query box valid questions are huh? please
चलो आर यू बैक यस सो लेट इस कंटिन्यू विथ वॉट वी आर डिस्कसिंग सो नाउ स्टार्टिंग विथ एक्सेप्टेंस नाउ एज वी आर सेइंग that specifically when offer is made it is to be accepted so contract emerges from acceptance of an offer so what is acceptance it is act of assenting by the offeree to an offer in our example itself when i am saying that i am willing to offer 100 kg of sugar for rupees 5000 to nitin sir now nitin sir needs to accept it nitin sir needs to assent to my proposal to my offer then and only then i am going to say that nitin sir has accepted my proposal so under section 2 clause b of the contract act when a person to whom proposal is made signifies his assent proposal is said to be accepted proposal when accepted becomes a promise as easy as that when we are discussing rules governing acceptance now what are the rules governing acceptance acceptance may be express that is by words or implied from conduct of the parties if i am giving you offer that i want to conduct a class on weekend are you ready to join you need if you accepted by answering to my question yes ma'am will be there that is your express acceptance if i tell you that i'll be conducting class on this weekend you don't reply to my message but you are there to attend the class on the weekend it is your implied acceptance that from your conduct i am understanding that you accepted my offer of conducting the class on coming weekend okay so this is it may be expressed it may be implied particular method of acceptance is prescribed offer must be accepted in the prescribed manner only if i am asking nitin sir to email me his acceptance only email if i receive i am going to say that it is accepted if nitin sir calls me and says okay i am ready to pay you 5000 send 100 kg of sugar whether that is a valid acceptance no because i have mentioned the method that i want it on email acceptance must be unqualified absolute correspond with all terms of the offer whatever i have mentioned everything is to be observed and it should be as per the terms of offer whatever we are mentioning in the offer itself counter offer conditional acceptance it is as rejection of the offer and it can lapse so where horse is offered for 1000 offer e counter offers 990 offer lapses by rejection now acceptance must be communicated this is again a mandatory requirement that it must be communicated to the offerer it is complete the moment it is communicated where the offeree intended to accept but does not communicate intention there is no contract mere mental acceptance is not at all enough so rules governing acceptance now comes one of the very important rules that mere silence on the part of the offeree whether it amounts to acceptance or it is not an acceptance so it does not amount to acceptance so offerer cannot frame his offer as to make silence or inaction of the offeree as acceptance so offerer can prescribe the mode of acceptance but not the mode of rejection so offeree's silence it cannot amount to acceptance now there is a general rule that offer is silence not amounting to acceptance is subject to certain exceptions there can be few customary practices if they are followed we can say that okay this is a valid acceptance if the offer is one which is to be accepted by being acted upon no communication to the offerer so it is necessary unless communication is stipulated in the offer itself so if reward is offered for finding a lost dog many times we get a advertisement that if you find this dog will pay you rupees 10000 okay so whether you are first going and saying that i am accepting your offer now i search your dog no if you find the dog you'll go and you'll say that okay you are offered i have found your dog please pay me rupees 10000 so reward is offered for finding a lost dog offer is accepted by finding the dog after reading about the offer unnecessary before beginning to search for the dog to give notice of acceptance to the offerer and acceptance must be given within a reasonable time 
before the offer lapses or is revoked offer becomes irrevocable by acceptance once it is accepted accepted it becomes irrevocable so acceptance never precedes offer first there should be offer then and only then there will be acceptance so no acceptance of an offer which is not communicated so performance without knowledge of the specific offer is no acceptance lalman shukla gauri dat case where servant brought the boy without knowledge now the boy is to be found he is lost so servant what he did he brought the boy he didn't knew that there was some reward which was offered for finding that boy now he was held not entitled to reward because he did not know about the offer so this is one of the landmark cases lalman shukla versus gauri dat where it is specifically mentioned that you must have knowledge of the offer then and only then we can say that you are you are accepting it now comes the consideration now what is the need of consideration again consideration is one of the essential elements for your contract and we say generally without consideration your contract is not a valid contract so a mere promise is not enforceable at law example they have given a promises to make a gift read that example a promises to make a gift of 500 to b but he changes his mind b cannot succeed against a for breach of promise why because b has not given anything in the return what is consideration consideration is something in return so is something in return given no so consideration is something in return so now in this case what has happened in this case as there is nothing in return it cannot be enforced by law so something in return is the consideration for the promise now how consideration is defined frederick pollock has defined consideration that this is act or forbearance of one party or promise is the price for which promise of the other is bought so it is some right interest profit benefit something which the one party is going to get that is in curie versus misa case section 2 clause d of contract act it defines consideration that when at the desire of the promisor promisee or any other person has done or absent from doing or does or absent from doing or promises to do or absent from doing something any act abstinence or promise it is called as a consideration for the promise so the principle consideration is essential in every contract we can observe this in the given definitions but there are few points which we are going to keep in mind that it is under two systems one is consideration at the desire of the promisor and consideration may move from the promisee or any other person so as we observe that the act abstinence forming the consideration this must be at the desire or request of the promisor now if it is done at the instance of the third party or without desire of the promisor then we are not going to term it as a consideration example d constructed a market complex at the instance of district collector now the occupants of the shops they promise to pay d a commission on articles whatever they are going to sell in their shops there was no consideration because money was not spent by plaintiff at the request of the defendant but at instance of the third person namely the collector so the contract was void this is durga prasad versus baldev case now in our example what they are saying that if a rushes to b's help whose house is on fire there is no consideration but a voluntary act take an example that if there is fire and you are going to help the people but before that you say that i'll be taking rupees 1 lakh as i'm helping you it is not the case voluntarily you are going there was no offer given to you so if a rushes to b's help whose house is on fire there is no consideration but a voluntary act but if a goes to b's help at b's request b is requesting you and then you are going then there is a good consideration as b did not wish to do the act gratuitously that is not with a motive that it is a voluntary act i don't want anything in return it is not done with that motive then you can have some or other consideration now comes the consideration may move from the promisee 
or any other person so consideration need not move from the promisee alone but it may proceed from any third person so as long as there is consideration for a promise it is immaterial who has furnished it so even a stranger to the consideration can sue on a contract provided his party to a contract so in english law we can say that the consideration must move from the promisee so that stranger cannot sue on the contract but a person seeking to enforce a simple contract he is required to prove this in the court that he himself has given the consideration in return for the promise he is seeking to enforce in indian law consideration may move from the promisee or any other person so that stranger to the consideration may maintain a suit this is one of the case laws chinaya versus ramaya now i'll give you one example with that example you'll understand this case law that my mother is entering into a contract with me that she is saying that she is giving her entire property to me subject to i am required to pay rupees 5000 per month to my aunt okay my mother is giving her entire property to me subject to i am required to pay rupees 5000 per month to my aunt as living expenses she is not earning she is uh, what you can say in her old ages so for her living expenses i am required to give 5000 per month now in this contract the contract is in between me and my mother whether my aunt is stranger whether she is third party whether she is other party if tomorrow after few years i am not paying rupees 5000 per month to my aunt whether my aunt can go in the court of law and ask for help that it was mentioned in the contract but kalyani is not following the contract whether this out as she is a stranger to the contract the contract is in between me and my mom she is not a party to the contract but she is beneficiary to the contract so she has a right she can go and she can take legal help by saying that i am not paying her rupees 5000 per month same is the case chinaya versus ramaya lady by deed of gift made over certain property to her daughter directing her to pay annuity now we are talking about the yearly uh, payment to be done to the donor's brother so donor's brother is my mom's brother my mom is the donor so to my mom's brother as had been done by the donor herself before she gifted the property daughter ex executed in writing in favor of the donor's brother agreeing to pay the annuity afterwards daughter declined to fulfill her promise from him as we are saying there should be something in the return so from return why should that the uncle is moved from him so consideration from her mother was the sufficient consideration now in relation to this only we are having doctrine of privity of contract and consideration now what is privity of contract stranger to a contract cannot sue in any of the laws for want of privity of contract so in dunlop pneumatic tire they have given one example take one example i am selling some product and i am selling it to nitin sir and i am asking nitin sir that you are not going to sell this below 1 lakh rupees okay listen properly i am selling a product to nitin sir and i am asking nitin sir not to sell those products for less than 1 lakh rupees now nitin sir further sold it to you for 1 lakh rupees you sold it to your friend for 80000 rupees now i have specifically mentioned that this product is not to be sold below 1 lakh rupees but your friend is selling for 80000 rupees can i go against your friend by saying that i have already asked not to sell below 1 lakh rupees whether this will be allowed 
whether i am allowed to go against your friend is my question let us see who can answer who can answer come on whether i can go against your friend yes am i allowed to go against your friend if your friend is selling it for 80000 <clears throat> let us see who can answer now i have asked you first question from start of the session today i didn't ask a single question let us see who can answer yes 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 come on fast whether i can go against your friend no why the contract is between us seller is stranger he cannot be sued okay now partly answer is correct but the contract is not in between you and me also the contract is in between me and nitin sir are you getting my point see i just write it down it is a contract in between lani shrode and nitin sir where i am asking nitin sir not to sell any product below rupees 1 lakh nitin sir is further selling it to you for rupees 1 lakh whether nitin sir is doing the terms and conditions whatever i have mentioned yes he is selling at rupees 1 lakh i have said not below 1 lakh so it is follow now further you are selling it to your friend for rupees 1 lakh allowed allowed now your friend is further selling it for 80000 now comes the question can kalani shirode go against your friend so answer is a big no why because the contract is only in between kalyani shirode and nitin sir what your friend is going to say i am a stranger i have not entered with you in any contract where you have mentioned i should not sell it below 1 lakh so you cannot sue me now if you have understood this example i'll add something else in this that whenever you sold to your friend you had mentioned not to sell below 90000 now can you go against your friend if you have mentioned in the contract that further it should not be sold below 90000 and the friend is selling it at 80000 can you go against your friend whether it is allowed are you allowed to go against your friend See, first answer you have given. Answer, but the next how many of you have understood the concept? 
the first question was perfect the answer that i cannot sue your friend because the contract is in between me and nitin sir and your friend is a stranger this was perfectly answered now i have added something in that what i have added i have added that you had a contract with your friend not to sell below 90000 which was sold for 80000 now can you go against your friend perfect yes it's allowed we go back to our theory part so in lock pneumatic tire what had happened d supplied tires to wholesaler x on a condition that any retailer to whom x re supplied should promise x not to sell below d's list price x supplied to s but s sold the tires below the list price what was held there was a contract in between d and x and a contra uh, contract in between x and s so d could not obtain damages from s as d had not given any consideration for s's promise to x nor was he party to the contract between d and x same like us nothing else so a person who is not a party to the contract cannot sue even though the contract is for his benefit so a who is indebted to b sells his property to c c the purchaser of the property promises to pay off the debt to b in case c fails to pay b b has no right to sue c for there is no privity of contract between b and c same now you'll get various various uh, case laws examples on the same topic now there are few exceptions to the doctrine of privity of contract so in indian law as well as english law <clears throat> i'm sorry indian law as well as english law there are certain exceptions to the rule that a stranger cannot sue on the contract but in few cases like a beneficiary under an agreement to create a trust can sue upon the agreement though not a party to it for enforcement of the trust so as to get the trust executed for his benefit now the case which chinaya versus ramaya we discussed my aunt was the beneficiary aunt uncle as the case may in my example it was aunt in chinaya ramaya it is uncle they were the beneficiaries so they are strangers but they are beneficiary so there is no privity of contract here they are allowed to go against the person if the terms conditions are not follow second is assignee under an assignment made by the parties or by operation of law that is in case of death insolvency can sue upon the contract for enforcement of his right title interest only a nominee that is a person for whose benefit another has insured his own life cannot sue on the policy because nominee is not an assignee okay so now in this specifically what we are going to keep in mind we are going to keep in mind that the assignee under assignment even if it is specifically a third party which you can say but still we are not going to use the concept of privity of contract and the parties are allowed they can sue on the policy because nominee is not an assignee then comes various family arrangements settlements between male members of hindu family for maintenance of marriages of female members now the female members though not parties to the contract they are beneficiaries and they can definitely use this right for example there are three brothers and these three brothers they have entered into contract with each other that they'll be paying some amount to their sisters now if they are not paying to the sisters can sisters go against the brothers as per privity of contract no why because they are strangers but exception these are the beneficiaries so they are allowed to go against the brothers in case of acknowledgement of liability where a receives money from b for paying to c and admits to see the receipt of that amount then a constitute himself as agent of c so in agency again it is exception to the privity whenever promisor is by his own conduct is stopped from denying his liability to perform the promise person who is not a party to the contract can sue upon it to make the promisor liable 
so same funda whatever we are already taken in the examples and in case where person makes a promise to an individual for benefit of third party creates a charge on certain immovable property third party can enforce the promise though he is stranger to the contract so these are few exceptions to the privity of contract now in india privity of consideration is not strictly applicable what it means it means that the consideration may be paid by parties or any other person so doctrine of privity of contract it provides that contract cannot confer rights or impose obligations upon any person who is not a party to the contract applicable in india with certain exceptions like trust covenant running with land family settlements etc so whatever exceptions we have studied they are giving the same thing in this okay i hope you have understood the entire concept i have taken examples for that so that you'll understand everything i'm trying my level best to explain you in a very 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 easy language isse easy mein nahi bana sakte ho this is really at most easy what you can say okay chalo going forward now we are having various kinds of consideration one is executory future one is executed present and one is past which means a past act or forbearance now consideration may be executory or future the name suggest that promise to be performed in future engagement to marry someone this is in future so executory future executed present that is the present whatever is done presently that act constituting consideration wholly completely performed if a pays today rupees 100 to shopkeeper for goods which are promised to be supplied the next day then a has executed his consideration but shopkeeper is giving executory consideration why because this is spent this is future so promise to be executed the following day so if price is paid by the buyer goods are delivered by the seller at the same time consideration is executed by both the parties what happens we go to a shop we buy something we pay immediately for that that is your present consideration executed if you are giving money and the person is saying that tomorrow will deliver this tomorrow will give the product then from your side it is executed from his side it is executory okay past is past act forbearance act constituting consideration which took place and is complete wholly executed before promise is made so consideration may be executory executed but as per english law it cannot be past english law is that past consideration is no consideration but indian law recognizes all three kinds of consideration now what are the rules governing consideration so rules every simple contract must be supported by a valuable consideration or what it becomes it becomes void subject to some exception now consideration may be act of abstinence or promise whatever you have decided it can be according to that there must be mutuality now why mutuality because it is consensus addendum we are trying to be on the same page so each party must do or agree to do something gratuitous promise as in case of subscription for charity it is not enforceable so a promises to subscribe 5000 for repair of a temple afterward he refuses to pay no action can be taken because it is not a consideration he is not going to get something in return you cannot go against that person consideration must be real not vague indefinite illusory son's promise to stop being a nuisance to his father being vague is no consideration how you are going to calculate it so no doubt consideration must have some value it need not be adequate that is full return for the promise not a mandatory that it should always be adequate consideration so adequacy it is again look out of the promiser and courts do not see whether every person making the promise has recovered full return of the promise so example they have given a voluntarily agreed to sell his car for 500 to b it became valid contract despite inadequacy of the consideration why because it may be that it is not adequate but it is a consideration consideration must be lawful for any illegal act 
we cannot say that if someone is paying to you for some illegal act it is a consideration it must be lawful if it is unlawful then agreement is void consideration must be something more than the promise is already bound to do for the promisor so agreement to perform existing obligation to whom obligation is already owed is not made for consideration example seaman deserts his ship so breaking his contract of service and is induced to return to his duty by the promise by for extra wages he cannot letter sue for the extra wages since he has only done what he had already contracted so consideration must be something more than the promise he is already bound to do it so these are few you can say essentials or rules pertaining to consideration now what are the exceptions when consideration is not necessary so general rule agreement made without consideration is void this is the general rule but section 25 of indian contract act it gives us certain exceptions where promise without consideration is valid and binding so if it is expressed in writing registered that it is made out of natural love and affection between the parties who are standing in near relation to each other now in this specifically what is to be kept in mind that it is made on account of natural love and affection between the parties who are related to each other this is in writing and registered as per law now for example if any elder brother on account of real love affection is promising to pay the debts of younger brother then the agreement is in writing registered whether this agreement is valid answer is yes this agreement is valid even if there is no consideration if it is made to compensate a person who has already done something voluntarily or done something which the promisor was legally compelable to do so now for any past voluntary service if any consideration is paid that is compensation is done then it is again an agreement without consideration for example if a finds b is wallet gives it to him b promises to give rupees 1000 this is a contract even if there is no consideration if it is a promise in writing signed by the person to pay a time barred debt which is barred by law of limitation so we are yet to study law of limitation what is law of limitation limitation is the period which is prescribed and only in that period the court is going to help us but if there is any promise in writing signed by the person that he is paying a time barred debt then that is again without consideration the agreement is valid so example a owes b rupees 10000 but the debt is barred by limitation act a signs the written promise to pay b rupees 5000 on account of debt so this is a valid contract then comes according to section 185 consideration is not required to create an agency so according to section 185 contract of agency consideration is not necessary to create an agency here again we can say that your contract is a valid contract in case of gifts actually made no consideration is necessary there need not be nearness of relation there need not be any natural love affection between them for example if i am gifting you iphone i have already handed over to you you have accepted the gift and now i am saying i want my iphone back whether it is valid no why because it has been already completed so completed gift it does not require any consideration so these are the exceptions which we can say for consideration is a essential element <clears throat> just read these case laws just read the case laws if you have any question write in the query box yeah. 
done clear totally clear to you okay so let us move to whether gratitude promise can be enforced so promise to subscribe to a charitable cause it cannot be enforced but if promise is put to some detriment as a result of his acting on faith of the promise and the promisor knew the purpose then promisor would be bound by the promise so this is kedarnath versus gauri mohan so what we understand from this that it is not necessary that the promisor should benefit by the consideration it is sufficient if the promise it does some act from which a third person is benefited and he would not have done that act but for promise of the promisor consideration again if we see that this consideration whatever is paid so promisor is not bound by his promise unless some consideration is offered by the promisee then comes terms must be certain so whatever we are discussing what we are saying that it should be certain whatever you are giving offer acceptance consideration if you think that it is to be binding then it should result in a contract so parties must agree on the terms of the contract also their intentions must be clear while entering into the contract and court will not enforce a contract the terms of which are uncertain so agreement to agree in future will not constitute a binding contract promise to pay an actress a salary to be mutually agreed between us is not a contract why because you have not already agreed to it so terms of final agreement if they are vague contract will fail for uncertainty so terms must be definite capable of being made definite without further agreement of the parties so contract to contract is not a contract so subject to contract or subject to agreement contract does not come into existence why because there is no definite or unqualified acceptance so your contract is always based on consensus or addendum unqualified acceptance intent to create legal obligation and consideration now comes the void voidable illegal contracts flaws in contracts and free consent okay so now there are various circumstances in which the contracts are made as per the rules but still we say that these are not good contracts why because there is some discrepancy some flaw error so as a result of such a flaw apparent agreement is not a real agreement there is no real agreement we have three remedies firstly the agreement may be treated as of no effect so it will be termed as void agreement secondly law may give party aggrieved the option of getting out of his bargain and the contract is then known as voidable so it is option of the party and the party at fault may be compelled to pay damages to the third party or to the So it didn't trouble me for the entire session, but at the end of the session, it started troubling. Coming back, so in void agreement, what we are saying that specifically few agreements are void agreements. Why they are termed as void agreements? Because they don't have any binding effect. Why? Because it is not enforceable by law. It ceases to be enforceable, and it. tells us about the various consequences 
which makes the agreement as a void agreement then we have voidable contract now what is voidable contract so it is discretion of the party if the party thinks they can put an end to that contract so if consent was not free contract will however be binding if he does not exercise his option to avoid it within a reasonable time the consent is not free so he is entitled to avoid the contract if he has given his consent due to misrepresentation fraud coercion undue influence then it becomes voidable we are going to study each and every term otherwise you will first start asking me ma'am what is fraud what is misrepresentation so everything is given in detail in further part as of now just keep in mind if your contract is having consent due to misrepresentation fraud coercion and influence then your contract is a voidable contract then comes illegal agreement so illegal agreement is directly unlawful agreement why because law prohibits agreements which are made with unlawful object or consideration so such an agreement is like a void agreement it has no legal effect between immediate parties so this is your illegal agreement i have given example a and b entered into contract which a will steal a diamond from museum b will give him rupees 5 lakhs whether this is a valid contract answer is no consideration should not be illegal so we are having void contract stable contracts and illegal contracts i hope you have understood the difference in between all these three kinds of contract if i have anything write it in the query box yes clear perfect so these are various various you can say kinds of contract where it depends upon the extent whether it is free or not so these are void voidable and illegal agreements and contracts so chief flaws in contract they are incapacity mistake misrepresentation fraud undue influence coercion illegality and impossibility so now this is one of the bigger parts so before starting that i think we'll move to the questions first and if time permits then we'll start this the further part so i request nitin sir please sir if we can take questions please sir sure so i'll read out the questions ma'am ma'am i'll I'm starting from the very start so it says ma'am is oral agreement valid i think you have already clarified but uh, i think another no. statement okay no a big no okay sure so the answer to your question is not no but <laughs> asking again probably doesn't serve any purpose you can refer back to the videos okay. yes Yes, please. That uh, is one request. Right, ma'am. The next question I've modified it because the language wasn't correct. So, ma'am, can one person enter into an agreement with himself? No. How can you enter in an agreement with yourself? Can I enter into an agreement with myself that okay, I'll be uh, giving this session and I'll pay myself this much amount? Whether it is possible? No. So you need at least two people. at least two people same thing just take an example that if you are talking to yourself you are walking on a road and you are talking to yourself what people will say you are mad you are just talking to yourself as we say we need at least two people to have a conversation so same it is the basic skill which we can say in the contract plurality minimum two persons are required two or more persons so hence you cannot enter into a contract with yourself 
like them. And the next question is, ma'am, what is the little meaning of the term consensus at Edom? So consensus at Edom is meeting of minds. What is meeting of minds? Whatever I am having in my mind while giving an offer, it should be same in the mind of Nitin sir while accepting the offer. So that is meeting of minds. If I am thinking that I am going to provide 100 kgs of sugar of C class, if there are classes of sugar, C class, but what Nitin sir assume that I am going to give A class sugar. So meeting of minds, it should be on the same page, whatever is in my mind, same is in Nitin sir's mind and then and only then we can say that the parties are having same motive in same sense at the same time they are thinking in same way. So that is consensus at Edom. Thank you ma'am. And the next question is ma'am please give some more examples of impossible agreements. Impossible agreements. Okay I have made an agreement. To marry a boy who is already dead. Whether it is possible? No, no. I cannot marry a person who is dead. That is impossible. Or I enter into an agreement with Nitin sir. Okay, now just take it as an example, a joke. I am entering into an agreement with Nitin sir that Nitin sir, if I complete my syllabus in time, you are going to take me to moon. Whether this is possible? So for this purpose, what we say that whatever is impossible, whatever cannot be done, cannot be completed is an impossible contract. Right, ma'am. Uh, ma the next one is, ma'am, uh... What does it mean by the terms lawful consideration and lawful object are both the same? We'll discuss this in next session. So I'll not answer this question. I'll take it as the sure. In tomorrow's part, we have lawful object, lawful consideration. So if there is any lag in between, tell me. I'll just change the network. No, no, ma'am. It's perfectly fine. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The next one is, ma'am. Uh, please, ma'am. Please, uh, can you give some more examples of the term ambiguous? Ambiguous. Mm -mm. What example can be given of ambiguous? That is vague, confusing. If I enter into a contract with Nitin sir that I'll be providing you 100 liters of sugar. It is ambiguous. Cannot be done. What faltu faltu example did you know sir? Anyway, I'm perfectly fine. Uh, <laughs> Ma'am, the next is, ma'am, is omission same as non-compliance of one's duty? Omission, yes, in few circumstances. You had to perform, but you didn't perform is omission. The next one is a compliment, ma'am. Uh, somebody is saying, ma'am, your teaching is very nice. Wow, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Ma'am, next one is a long question. Uh, I'll just read it out. It says, ma'am, assuming that contract was made over phone call and after some time, Offri changes his mind and goes back uh, from his words. Also, there is no evidence like call recording or such thing what will happen. So the question is so what for, will happen? Is uh, it so necessary? for that purpose, generally, we uh, refer it to be in writing. But in few circumstances, as you have already received the acceptance, if it is clear, it is heard properly, then the person cannot say that I don't want to enter into the offer because that is already done. Once accepted, cannot be revoked. Ma'am, continuing with that, it says, uh, is it necessary to reduce every oral contract into a written one? Mm, it is not as such mentioned in the act that every oral contract must be in writing, but preferably we always suggest to have it in writing only for all these purposes only that if the person afterwards says something else, or if I say that I had said 10,000 rupees, Nitin sir heard 1,000 rupees. So now what to do? So for that purpose, it is preferably in writing. It is not mentioned anywhere. As per my knowledge, it is not mentioned anywhere that every oral agreement should be reduced in writing. It is not mentioned anywhere, but it's a good question. I'll definitely go again and look in the bear act. 
if I get any such provision. Like, ma'am, ma'am. Next one is again a compliment. It says no better delivery of contract is possible. Really, very elaborate and lucid, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ma'am, next one. Uh, somebody saying stranger to consideration cannot sue. Ma'am, can you please elaborate on that? Stranger cannot sue. We have taken so many examples that a stranger cannot sue. In our example, in which I was selling a product to Nitin sir, Nitin sir to you, you to your friend, and we said that you are, I cannot go against your friend because your friend is a stranger. So I cannot go against your friend. The contract was in between me and Nitin sir. So I have a right only to go against Nitin sir. Now, in that example, if Nitin sir has sold you for rupees eighty thousand, but obviously I have a right to go against Nitin sir because we have entered into a contract where the terms and conditions are mentioned that sir is not allowed to sell below one lakh. But I cannot go against a stranger who is not a party to the contract. But exception is that if the party is a beneficiary, then the beneficiary is allowed to sue because. Privity of contract there is not applicable as it is for their benefit. So stranger, we have taken many examples. Again, you can go to the recordings and you can definitely check. Even if after going through the concept, you are having any question tomorrow, raise it again. We'll again have few examples for that. Right, ma'am. The next one is an interesting one. It says, uh, can someone? Can something which is not possible today, but may be possible in future due to development in technology, then will such a consideration be considered as impossible? Possible, not possible today, but possible in future. So whether it is considered as impossible as of today, yes, impossible. As of today, it is impossible. Right. Coming possible, you can enter into a contract at that time. Take an example: if I would have entered into a contract with Nitin Sir 15 years ago, that you are going to send me your acceptance through email, was it possible? No. Now it is possible. At that time, it was impossible. So, in impossible terms and conditions, we cannot enter into the contract. Right, ma'am. Last two questions. Uh, it is undertaken by one party can be considered as an agreement. And there's a question mark then. I didn't understand. Pardon, sir. So, please. Oh, so, okay. can? so, so, undertaking by one party can it be considered as an agreement? Undertaking by one party. Okay, so we can say that only one party is agreeing something, undertaking something that I will perform this for you, and there is no anything in return. So, it can be in exceptions. It can be in exceptions where we studied uh, consideration is not always required. So, in that, it can be done. Best example is our parents. They don't get anything from us. They don't expect anything from us. They just expect us to excel in whatever we are doing. Only people in our life, which I always say that, mom and dad are only two well wishers of your life who don't expect anything from you, and they always think that our kids should do more better than us. Whatever we have missed, our kids should do it. So. Best people of our life is mom and dad. Do respect them. Big asset of our life. Totally not related to our topic, but as the question was, I told it. The last question. Uh, okay, it says, ma'am, can you please once again elaborate on the difference between void contract and void agreement? Okay, so first you need to understand the difference in between agreement and contract. So. Now this is a clue for me to take this question. Today's first question: distinguishing between agreement and contract. This question I'm going to give you today. Then and only then we can differentiate in between void agreement and void contract. So first we'll write this today, and tomorrow we'll discussing the answer. You yourself is going to get the answer that what is the difference in void agreement and void contract. That's all about the questions, ma'am. Okay, so now it's twelve twenty-two. I'll give today's questions, and then we'll have rapid revision in last five minutes, and then we'll wrap up for the day. Okay, sir. Um, another question. I just now got it. So, um, I don't know. Okay, it says why the law of contract is not extended to Jammu and Kashmir. Now that is a very big story because again, it is 
applicable it is not applicable i'm not going to go into that because that is a different story as of now will not enter into that as that is what i can answer for this question thank you yes so let's take three questions for the day and then we'll move to the rapid revision <clears throat> chalo what questions to be taken first question i told you difference in between differentiate in between agreement and contract differentiate in between agreement and contract come on first question today is 20th first question differentiate in between agreement and contract <clears throat> next question next question no concession no contract no consideration no contract subject to certain exceptions no consideration no contract subject to certain exceptions explain briefly no consideration no contract subject to certain exceptions explain briefly and the last question last question what is meant by privity of contract last question what is meant by privity of contract discuss briefly discuss briefly the exceptions to privity of contract what is meant by privity of contract discuss briefly the exceptions to privity of contract three questions three questions have you written all three questions yes okay now rapid revision best part is our rapid revision <laughs> from which chapter should we start we have 4 minutes in our hands you need to answer very fast okay very 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 fast you need to answer so first question first question as per your right to information act as per your right to information act the information is generally provided in how much time as per right to information act information is generally provided in how much time how much time come on fast i need the timeline who is answering how much time period generally the information is provided in how much time
Ma'am, this is very confusing, correct? Thirty days, very good. Thirty days, perfect. Anyone? else wants to add anything yes 30 days perfect 120 no no it's 30 days 30 days not 48 hours okay it's 30 days now as per your interpretation of statutes as per your interpretation of statutes, what is the name of the rule in which we say known by its associates? Known by its associates. Known by its associates. Known by its associates. Known by its associates. Come on, fast. Which is the rule? Known by its associates. Known by its associates. Come on, come on, come on, fast, fast, fast. Known by its associates, which is the rule. Known by its associates. Nasita resources, very good. Spellings, please take care of spellings. It just didn't gender is please, please, please be thorough with the spellings. Please request it. a small request. Please be thorough with the spellings, whatever you are writing, because otherwise you're going to just lose marks. Not to lose marks. It's not Igisdim generis. Igisdim generis is same kind or species. Known by its associates is Nasita resources. Okay, one last question. One last question. What are the forms of Maria? What are the forms of man's Ria? What are the forms of men's Ria? What are the forms of men's Ria? Three forms. I want just the names. What are the forms of mensria? Come on, fast. One last question I have asked you. What are the forms of mensria? 
difficult to pronounce we are required to keep all these legal french all latin terms in mind we don't have any option write it down so you will not forget it i had given few clues also how to remember these terminologies i am yet to start asking those questions on legal terminologies which i had asked you last week only to read intention negligence recklessness very good perfect guilty mind nahi likhna hai intentions negligence recklessness i am asking you forms of mens rea i am not asking you what do you mean by mens rea so try to understand the question so intention negligence recklessness are the three forms of mens rea negligence recklessness intention okay intention recklessness negligence perfect who is this damnum sign injury injurious and damnum why so whether i am asking you components of thoughts constituents of thoughts no i had asked you a question on forms of mens rea so negligence recklessness intention these three are the forms of mens rea okay now coming back just one thing to keep in mind what we are going to keep in mind the question which was asked pertaining to applicability geographical applicability so just changes in your study material applicable to whole of india okay applicable to whole of india yes now three questions we have taken today you are going to write all these three questions we have already exceeded our time so let us wrap up for the day tomorrow we'll be discussing the remaining part of the chapter as well as first answers for these three questions so thank you so much over to you sir right hey, ma'am thank you very much uh, you have taken the subject so elaborately i i was just wondering in one day how much have you covered thank you ma'am <laughs> yes thank you thank you ma'am right, thank you <laughs>